everybody. It's Nurse Coach Bina here. Welcome to the Entrepreneurial Talk. I am so excited to have Stacy here today. Hello. And this is actually an improv secret little video that we're doing. No one knows about it until it until we drop it. And I really wanted to give Stacy a place and a safe place to share her story. And it has been incredible to watch her journey. I've been in the pleasure to be in the room where it happens with Devin Bannison and the Game Changer in LA. I have met her incredible son, Bailey, which is one of the other reasons why we're on this. And it is just a true blessing. And the craziest part is two powerhouses, man. We're, there, there's some be some creations going on. Yes. And this is just a start of a true partnership that's coming through. And I don't say, and everyone who knows me, I do not say that word very lightly. <laughs> and so Stacy, I am so excited. Thank you for being here. It's an honor. Thank you for hosting me, for giving uh, me this opportunity. Thank absolutely. You. And just remember, this is just me and you still having a conversation. It has not changed. Nothing's <laughs> going on. We still can't come in. We can relax. We can be free. We can come in. But I really, and we haven't really truly, but we've spoken bits and pieces about last weekend. Yeah. But we haven't really truly spoken because you needed time to process, time to comes in. So just for the viewers out there, Stacy had this incredible weekend with Steve Hardison. It was Super Bowl weekend. It was also the weekend of, they went to another event, which I'm going to have her explain because it's her story to tell. And Really, like, first question to you, Stacy, is how did this come up? Like, how did you get Steve Hardison to spend three days with you? I think that's the main thing is where everyone's <laughs> going to want to go. We might as well just jump in that first. Like, how did that even work? Oh, my. Uh, yes. So thank you for asking. I, to be honest, I'm still integrating the miracle. Yep. And the irony is that I was heading to Mesa where Steve sees his clients and usually never leaves. And it was my last session with him for a while. Ah. And I was really just praying and mentally preparing about how I was going to be complete. It was going to be the best session ever. And I was going to be whole. Mm. And then there's the voice in my back in my head going, oh, I wish I had all the money to spend $200,000 a year. Right. And the voice in the head that there's so much more I could do with him. And yeah, what more could I, and this is the operative word, get if I spend mm -hmm. more time with Steve. So we go and I just let it go and I'm just present. And he's sharing and teaching ways of being from several stories. And I'll circle back to that. And what came forward was he shared that he and Sanika, the fire starter mm -hmm. street had a miracle in the Grand Canyon. And he shared with me that Seneca is doing a very powerful spoken word piece on the N word. Mm -hmm. And he shared it, the rough version of it with me. And I just got like all of these downloads and transmissions and mm. how I could serve mm. be a purpose. And he's getting on the phone with Seneca. So I got on the phone with Seneca. I shared I have a background, a long career in public relations and storytelling. And I started my career being a story editor for Danny DeVito's film company. And I grew up in Los Angeles. So I know how the Los Angeles area, the media and entertainment industry works. And I wanted to leverage my relationship and my network to amplify this message. Mm. So sharing some of the details that were coming through with Sanika, we agreed to and Cindy is in LA and I'm in LA. So we agreed to connect the following day. And at the end of the session, I was, Steve was walking me out and I just got another download. And I said, it would be so powerful, Steve, if you were at the taping to hold Sanika in his highest power and consciousness. So he could just be this channel for this message. Mm -hmm. so would you say anything to Sanika about that? Would you be open to that? And he said, I would absolutely be willing to do that, but I would never mention that to him. It would only come forward if Sanika asked. Mm. And we left it there. I popped in my Uber and went home. And then the next day I 
got on the call with Sanika. We had our mind meld. And a few hours later, Steve called me. He said, you are not going to believe this. Sanika asked me if I would come and I'm coming to Los Angeles. And in the office the day before, Steve had shared that Kasudi had wanted to go to Mumbai and he preferred to speak. And Steve said, there's no way you're speaking if that's your goal. Gabby went over there and she's just serving. She didn't even ask to speak. So he created the consciousness of service. And so right. Kasudi went over there, served his rear mm -hmm. end off. And he created with Steve. He said, Steve, I know you have diabetes. This is a big trip for you. I'm, I would love to be your aid so that I have the food you need, whatever you need. I can just be of service by your side. And because Steve had sh totally just shared that story with me, what came forward when we were on the phone is Steve, I'm in Los Angeles. I know you're not a details guy. He hadn't ever traveled without Amy for over 30 years. Like I don't, what's he going to do? Rent a car? That's going to be a mess. So I said, Steve, I know you're thinking about driving or flying, but if you fly, I, it would be my privilege, my honor to be of service. I can pick you up at the airport. I'll make sure you have whatever foods you need and you can stay in a hotel near me so I can completely mm -hmm. get you around. And he was going to offer to do where people drive with him and the whole thing. But he said, you know what? It's clear that this is what's meant to be. And he wanted to surprise. He, Senika said he could bring a guest to the taping. And he said, I'm going to surprise Senika and it's going to be you, Stacey. Aww. So yeah, it was beautiful. And I think just the message was that it was hilarious because the day before I was like about getting, what was I getting out of being with Steve Hardison? I didn't get enough. How could I have gotten more time to get? And then when... I really was just coming from, I don't want Steve alone in Los Angeles trying to do logistics. How can I just make sure he's got what he needs so he's as comfortable as possible? And truly, that was where I was a place coming of surfing from. Because you're coming from a true place of service. I really just wanted him to be comfortable and not... Right. In a loving way. Really. It wasn't like, how can I get three days with Steve Hardison? It was... I want to make sure this man is as healthy as possible and cared for and, and supported. And that's when everything just took right. off. Yeah. I emailed Amy and I'm like, what are his favorite lozenges? What snacks do I need in the car? How do I make sure he's healthy? <laughs> What's his favorite sweet. sandwich? <laughs> yeah. And it's, and I'm sure to this day, Steve will always be grateful for that he's he's just so loving and because he is just right he is one of the most lovingest person I've ever met in my entire life and when he looks at you and really stares into your eyes there is a comfort there that is like the biggest hug you can ever have and it's the same thing what we we're talking about with Seneca right when Seneca speaks that uh, it's there's something that's so powerful about Seneca that when he speaks, it's like a light break, this bright light radiating out of him. And it's just like this big hug, the same hug you see when Steve Hardison looks at you. Yeah, I really had the privilege to spend a lot of time with Seneca and, and I will continue to. And he's really... He's really, Steve mentioned this concept to us called OCO, which I want to share with everybody, which is one convert only. Mm. And the only person that Sanika needed to convince, because Sanika had been sitting on this piece for at least two years, if not more. And it wasn't until this encouragement and the car ride with, from the Grand Canyon, more and more time with spirit, where it was just like, the only person that was standing in the way was our own. Him beliefs and the only people that we need to convert to have complete limitlessness be the universe be love is ourselves right one convert only is you is me right. and so we right. talked a lot about oco at this on this trip and yeah it's and we also had this brilliant conversation about if you don't pay the cost you pay the price and what that really means is the cost is surrender Yes, And if you don't surrender to 
following a mission larger than oneself, or you don't surrender to that little quieter voice that may not be yelling, but like your soul, your truth, you do pay the price. Yeah. And we think it gets harder. It gets more complicated. It's less alignment. We think that there's such a cost now and it's hard to do this, or it's hard to let go of whatever it is. But if you don't do this, the price is exponential. Yeah. And it's just beautiful. Sinika was like, I get it. The cost is surrender. And he's surrendering to being a channel for really powerful messages and tough conversations. And Steve calls me the general and I'm here to amplify it. And what I think one of the roles that I can play in this evolving, unfolding miracle story is, which I just got clear was Seneca, I want him to be his, I'm hoping that my support can mean that he's just in his full creative power. He is the talent. He is the creator. He and is a help. powerful, he is just, I, and I told him this that day when we had the VIP dinner in Arizona and me and him were having, we were standing together eating dinner. And I just remember telling him, I said, you are such a gentle giant soul. Mm -hmm. I said, you are so powerful on so many levels. And I'm I, again, this is my first time talking to the gentleman after seeing him on stage. Okay. And I'm five, two, and he's six, seven, like he's tall. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's really big. tall. I don't know if he's six, uh, seven, but, uh, yeah, but yeah. you know what I mean? Like he's tall. Yeah, he's big. Yeah. And I, he, and he, and I remember him looking me in my eye, even as short as I am, he looked at me in mind. He goes, Bina, do you mind explaining to me? What do you mean yeah. by that? Yeah. And I told him the same thing, but I'm going to state again is that his stage present, it is electrifying. It's and I've ne I have been in so many rooms with so many poets, so many incredible talented people and spent a crap ton of money to watch people. I have never been moved the way I was moved when that guy spoke. And that light that I see in him, that shining beam that comes from him and it just it's like a big hug everyone comes in a big hug and that light that feeling just radiates within you and yeah. it stays with you and it's this powerful statement of just the three words all or two words i apologize sonika all, all in. in and the minute every time I say that, or every time I hear it in a phrase, in a, in a, just people talking about it on the streets or just in general, right? It brings me back to that moment of that electrifying moment of just feeling that love that he does. And that is the gift that he comes in. But what I really want to share is as we're talking about Sonika and Sonika, if you're hearing this, we love you. <laughs> but I really want to understand that Steve Hardison doesn't just call you the general for no reason. You are a master of creator. And I want to truly acknowledge you because you have acknowledged Steve. You've acknowledged Seneca. <laughs> I really want to acknowledge you because this is the miracle of LA, the miracle of what you're calling this, the miracle of Bailey. I don't know what miracle term you're stating. I don't even think you have a name for this either. Yeah, but, three days in LA. <laughs> right? I want to acknowledge you for the strength that you have came through. Because I've seen you from Game Changer to now. And there is a large shift that occurred from Game Changer to today. And you may or may not see it, but I see you. Mm. And that shift is only, only... I understand why he gave you the term, the general, because it's not bad. It's not bad. Oh my gosh. She's going to ring my head off and blah, blah, blah. No, it has nothing to do with that type of general people. Let me just make that clear. <laughs> it's the confidence, the mm. let's just get it going. Let's go from A, B, C, D. Everything's in order. You walk in, everything is set. That's just your, that's just who you are. And that's who you are naturally. 
And if you want to get it done, you're just like the general. You get people to go, you roll it up, we find out what it is, you put all the missing pieces out, and then you walk in and you just, bam, it's done. Thank you for seeing that. Thank you for noticing. And I love Game Changers for everybody who may not know. It's Devin Bandison, who's one of our coaches and just so powerful and who he is from a state of loving and service and one of our mentors. He has this beautiful experience and we, that's how Bean and I met. And this was in like in the mid-October and Bean, I don't know if you remember, but at the end, the last day you're speaking your words, your possibility. Okay. And I've done a lot of personal development work. I spoke, I'm an empowering, loving leader. And I burst into tears. Okay. Mm -hmm. I never do that. I burst into tears because yeah, it was a really tough moment. And because I didn't feel like an empowering, I was loving, but I didn't feel like an empowering leader at the time I said it. And I was, it just wasn't in the line. It it didn't feel congruent. And now it's, those are bricks in me. Those are like, that is a hundred percent true. I remember that day. And I remember, I, I think it was Allison next to me, to be honest. And I remember that I was like, damn, yes, that is her. Like I felt that energy from, and you were way across the room from me. Remember you're in the back row on the side, like I think in the middle to be, I can't even tell exactly where you were in the room. (laughs) Yeah. And (laughs) yeah, you're in the back row, right in the middle. And I remember feeling that I was like, she is that powerful leader. And again, I want people to remember Steve Hardison had no idea that what was stated in this room. And the correlation of that for you to get the general from Steve Hardison, just from what I saw of you back then to what now people are seeing, and now the world is about to see even more of Stacy. It's just, honey, we're just barely cracking service. Like me, like we're just barely cracking. And yes, Devin Bannison is one of our coaches. Just want to make that clear. He's mentoring both of us. Yes. So Want to make that out there? That's how we met. This is how he comes in. Love you, Devin. But just know that from that day, and now you're the general. I'm gonna keep calling. I'm just gonna call you the general from now on, <laughs> just because it's a fun. And what I got was I left there wondering why does that make me cry? Mm. And it started me on this path where then I got into the book of being, into the ultimate coach. I found Steve Hardison, and I. And I'm going to be real with everybody because I want people to know that this is about you, as Steve teaches, that everything that we're talking about, this is about you. I took money out of my book. It's this this book, just so people know, it's the ultimate coach. It's written by that. Yep. It's you read it the way it is. And and we're not. That's on my desk. Yes. And it's like one of the things on the back of the book with the instructions of reading this book about you is, and I'm calling this over over now is who would I need to be to have a, create a level of confidence that is remarkable. Yeah. Who do I need to be to live the most extraordinary life I can live? And I was like, okay, I want to be absolutely extraordinary. I want to be fully in love with myself and my life and I'm going for it. So I took money out of my 401k Mm. to do an agreement with Steve. Mm. I was like, I'm all in, I'm betting on myself. And I had done a lot of personal development work, but now I was ready to create. Correct. And I think that's where the tears came from was I'm an empowering, loving leader, but I've, I'd been in a grief journey. My father passed in 2022 and lots of things just Mm -hmm. collapsed all the ways of being that had no longer been working for me but I didn't have the courage to cut the cord. That all happened in a period of three weeks. Businesses, revenue streams drying up, boyfriend, that ended everything in three weeks. And I had a card on my desk that said, barns burnt down, now I can see the moon. Mm. And I was like, I just felt like I was standing in nothing. I couldn't pick up any tool from the past. It was just, it was burnt. So 
2022 was grief, 2023 was healing. And yeah, and 2024 is about creation. And I am just so blessed and so grateful for the work with Steve for really creating the document, which it, for everybody, it's really doing, taking your limiting beliefs, your crappy thinking, doing deep forgiveness work that I was blessed to do and see how Steve does his process for you in the room and then creating more powerful ways of thinking and creating from there. And in the beginning, when you first do it, it feels like a list of affirmations and it feels like you don't even believe because they come from your soul. And yep. one of them is I am always in the exact right place and time to create and manifest miracles. And that felt like ridiculous to me. Then you look at what happened three days with Steve. That's a brick. I'm like, yeah, I am always in the exact right place and time to create and manifest miracles. That is so true for me. <laughs> it is. You are. And, and, and you are always at the right place at the right time. Even with our relationship, like how our friendship is developing and how it's shaping into what it is that we're creating and what it is that comes in. And it's this powerful, magnificent thing that's growing, right? And even when we were in Arizona, how it was this like electrifying force between just me and you. And we were just locked in. And I remember everyone's like, you going to dinner? And I'm like, oh, we, and everyone's like, I think they're having a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> we were like, yeah, remember? So we were, in we were just like, we were just like a whole, I felt like we were in the matrix for a split really second was. there. Because it was like, everything was slowed down. It was just me and you. Everything zoned out. It was literally like this weird really dynamical, weird. like... If anyone's ever experienced this, you understand that cosmic event of really, and I really want to say this and explain this in a little bit, because it's when you surrender to the universe, when you surrender to whatever higher being, I, I personally, I believe in a universe. There's, I believe in multiple forms of God. So it's just whoever, and if you don't believe in God, I don't care. It's just whatever you are surrendering to. Okay. The minute you slow yourself down and just really embrace it, and Miley Cyrus said this perfectly in the Grammys on how she was talking about the butterfly effect and how this kid was trying to get the butterfly and trying to catch it and he got frustrated, finally just sat there, surrendered, and then the butterfly sat on this kid's, on this kid's nose and finally caught the butterfly. And that's how her thing was with being with Mariah Carey on stage and how she got the Grammys after however many she's been in the music industry since she was seven. And it's really that moment of surrendering is when brilliance occurs. And I think it's in that moment when me and you truly just surrendered in that moment is when true genius is going to occur. And again, the right place at the right time. It, like if we did it earlier, it would not have worked. If we did it late the next day, it would not have worked. It just had to be that moment when I don't even know if you came to me, I came to you. We just went zoop, gravitated right towards each other. But I want to also, and thank you. That's so true. And it was magical. Being with Steve, I call it being with Steve in the wild, just wandering from moment to moment. Yeah. I really got clear that he's not clogged up with his limiting beliefs up here. So it's mm -hmm. more of like just clear and he's available to be present, like really present, mm -hmm. really listening and really coming from a place of loving. And he is so gifted at being in one nanosecond, getting into somebody's world, right? Like seeing what is the concierge? Oh, what's the way in with that? What's the way in with and I was learning with the con with the person that checked us in, the registration person, and complimenting them and noticing what their bracelets is or acknowledging them for how wonderful he is with people. And just one little thing, and he is inside that person's world. He went and was sidled up to a homeless woman and asked her, mm -hmm. does she read? And finds out she was formerly a teacher. Who does that? Steve. And because of that... He creates miracles because right. what I got also is I'm always in the right place and time to create and manifest miracles. I always was. I you just always, wasn't there. You just weren't listening. There. 
I wasn't present. I wasn't listening. Yeah. I wasn't, I was in my head. I wasn't, mm -hmm. so that's available for everybody all the time. And that's what Steve's so gifted at. And yes. I saw it like we went to meet Senika at church and it was very crowded and there was no parking and there were cones everywhere. And most people would drive around, get frustrated, figure it out. What does Steve do? He jumps out. He talks to the, one of the people there and phrases it in some way where he didn't really get a yes or no, but he went and he moved the cones. He went and he moved the cones and we were in and parked in a second and he created that. Yeah. Right? And, and it's like, where, and so it's like, where are the cones in our lives? It's yeah. we live like that. Where are we playing time. small? Where are we playing small in our lives? Where are we not seeing what you call cones? Some people, I know somebody else had a, an incident with the flagpole, right. which is a story that if you guys want, it's not, that is not my story to share. That's someone else's story to share. But it's also just going back into that world of slowing yourself down and really embracing and not in a bad way with what you want, but it's more of, hey, what are the possibilities of X, Y, and Z happening? And this is where Devin Bennison is also very good at, right? Where do you have that possibility? If you don't ask, then you will never know. If you don't ask these bold statements, if you don't ask these different things, the answer may be no. And then it's okay. How can we create this? This is what comes in using your personality, your charm, your real truth, your true authentic self. Then people are going to see you. There's a very big difference of asking people and not being authentic than asking people and truly being authentic. And that comes with everything in life, whether it's personal, whether it's business. And a lot of people go back, like they go, I want the strategy. I want the blueprint. I want this. I want, can you give me all these? And even now, in my own coaching, what I do is the same. It's very similar in the sense of what is it that you are creating? Because then the want goes away. And it's the same thing of what we talk about when we read the book, right? It's the wants, the want, I shoulda, coulda, woulda, shoulda, all this stuff, right? And it's just you coming from this place of love of, okay, what can I do today to create a miracle? And it's a simple, and it could be just as simple as, I'm taking my daughter out of school today. She does not know it. And I'm going to go spend the day with her to create a miracle with her for a lifetime of cherishment because I know I'm traveling for a week. But this one day, she is going to remember. Because I'm just going to spoil her. And not in a bad way, but you know. Yeah, like the mom, daughter, love of, okay, let's do this. We're going to go here. We're going to be this. Like, what is it that you want to create, Rhea? So it, you remember this day for the rest of your life. And it does not have to be anything money related. Mm. I think that's what people have to remember. It can be mommy. Let's go for a walk. Okay. Let's go for a walk. But you're bringing up this beautiful memory that was created. And what I saw with Steve Mm -hmm. miracles come from his presence and listening. Yeah. So he's not even planning on, there yeah. was no plan of going here and no doing and all doing came from the listening and the being present. And the, the example is <clears throat> I took my son Bailey, who's 17 out of school, mm -hmm. not supposed to do that junior year, the most important year whatever. But I got really clear that he can go to school or he can spend the time in the car with Steve. Yeah. Where's he going to learn the most? So we took him, Bailey and I took Steve to the air, back to the airport. We park, you park at the airport. What do you do? You get out of the car you get, and I'm ready to go. And Steve just gently and lovingly says, let's just stay here. Let's just stay in the car for a minute and ha have a talk. Cause he was with Bailey in the back seat and really was with him and had mm -hmm. this sense that Bailey had something he wanted to say. He was mm. so awake to mm. where Bailey was at, where me as the parent, I'm always like, let's go, let's go, Bailey, come right. on, late. I just was super not there at all. And because Slowing Steve yourself did down. that, yes. And because Steve was just like, no, we could just sit in the car for a minute. I don't think I've ever done that in my whole life. 
And Bailey felt so understood and loved mm-hmm. and safe and respected just because Steve was like, let's just be here with each other. Yeah. And, and Bailey came forward and asked Steve to be his godfather. I had no idea mm-hmm. at all. And it was just, I just think if I had just rushed out of the car, like Bailey wouldn't have had that courage, yeah. that opportunity, that, that connection, that yeah. loving space. And how many of times do we do that as parents or in relationships or in business? We're like getting to the next thing where that was created because Steve said, and he noticed, let's just be here together. And yeah. a miracle. And that's the miracle came from that. I, I'm still like, I think it will take lifetimes for me to process that experience, but the miracle came from being still in the loving and being present with the other person. Yeah. yeah. And that's beautiful. It's so beautiful to share. I appreciate you sharing that. People have to be reminded to slow down, to be present. And it is serious. The power of the pause, Mm. the power of the pause. It's so powerful of just giving yourself that moment and it's not always rushed. Yeah. Yeah. I see you on that and I acknowledge you for that. So I appreciate you. (laughs) Thank you. It's just, it's so, it's all of our opportunity to just, Mm -hmm. just notice like what's going on with the other person. What's going on with ourselves. If we just really was like, is there anything else you want to say? Yeah. That's funny. Cause that's my next question. Is there anything else ah! you want to say? As we close out, yes. is there anything else you want to say that would make you feel complete? Yes. Thank you for asking. Mm-hmm. We were driving. I was driving with Steve. I, I did a lot of driving and I wish I had it more. T- I wish I was able to take notes, but I was driving, listening to directions and trying to be present with Steve. My a lot of, a lot going on. And Steve said, is there anything you want to ask me? And I said, honestly, Steve, in my document, I created that my daily work in life is my artistic masterpiece. Mm. And I didn't even know what that experience was. And then I said to Steve, being with you in flow, Over these three days, I felt like I was in a Monet painting. It felt like we were creating and painting and being artistic in life, in the experience of how we, he engaged with every waiter, every human on the set of Sinica's taping. But such an invitation to live our lives in creation like it's a painting and just like having the experience of being living my life in Los Angeles as a Monet painting it was such a gift, such a learning opportunity. And it's available. This is for all of us. This is about right. you. Mm-hmm. Right. And so just, and this being here with you, being here with everybody, mm. it feels like painting to me, it feels like art. So I just want to thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate it. And there's a bond between me and you that not the world would may or may not ever understand. I don't think anyone needs to understand, but I see you. Thank you. And is there anything else you'd like to share before we end? No, I just, I'm just grateful to be here with you. I'm grateful for this community. I'm grateful for anybody that is finding this and just with the message that we're so much more powerful as creators than we know and to trust yourself and to just that, that everything's possible and just to be present in the loving and be that's where the creation comes from. And I'm just grateful to Steve. I'm grateful to Amy. I'm grateful for this amazing book, The Ultimate Coach. Yep. Which sits right here on my desk. It because and and it's the honest truth. There's days I look in here and 
actually it just came up that on 231, I literally just popped up to the page of the, po- the creating the possibilities. And it's funny how every time I flip through this book, I open it up to a different location and every time I open it up to a different location, it's usually always right where I need to be. And just who do you need to be to have live the most extraordinary life that you can live? And let's leave on that. Let's just thank you for this extraordinary experience. And I can't see wait to see what we create today thank and, all, and beyond. <laughs> thank you. Blessing. Thank You're you. A blessing. Thank you. You are a true blessing too. If you guys, how can people get a hold of you if they wanted to contact you? That's a great question. Oh, Stacy <laughs> S T A C Y. Well, I'm going through Instagram. Stacy S T A C Y at Stacy Katz K A T Z dot com. That's my email. It's the best way to go. Stacy at Stacy Katz dot com. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And we'll have all the information linked on the YouTube video, so we'll have it ready to go. You guys will have all the information you need. If you guys can't get a hold of her for any reason, just like always, reach out to me. I will connect the two of you. I am, I love connecting people. I love building people's dreams up and seeing where, what you can create and where the possibilities are for you. And I appreciate you guys all listening. Please love and subscribe to the YouTube video. And Stacy, you are a blessing. This is an improv hidden gem. That again, I don't know when this is going to record. I don't know when this is going to go up. It's all in Stacy's hands. So whenever she gives me the okay, <laughs> very soon. Let's go. Whatever she gives me the go. Game. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's a blessing. And until next time, guys, we will see you guys. If you ever guys want to be a presenter or comes in and have a conversation with me, please just message me. I'd love to have a conversation. All right, guys, have a good one. Bye. Bye.